With episode 9, we have come to the end of Zero One's first arc. I believe most of us can agree that these first 9 episodes have been an awesome introduction to the series and its world. Rather than a plot-centered episode, I would say episode 9 was very character-centered. We didn't get any mind-blowing plot-related revelations or twists, but almost every key character received an important slice of development. Let's start with Aruto. Between episodes 8 and 9, what our main character faced was a challenge to his positive beliefs about humor gear. In earlier episodes, he was able to shift all the blame away from Huma Gear and pin it on the evil hackers Metsubo Jinrai instead. But after learning that Metsubo Jinrai are Huma Gear themselves, Aruto was shook. Especially that scene where the doctor and nurse Huma Gear started cackling with evil laughter as they transformed into Magir, that look of utter bewilderment on his face as he watched it all happen. And of course, this all culminated with Horobi's so called execution of Vulcan. Hence, once Aruto returned to his office in episode 9, he was unable to fight the vice president's decision to shut down all medical humor gear. We saw him struggle against the seeds of doubt in his heart as he lost sight of his own path. Ironically, the one who helped him get out of this slump was Yua, who is the character that's supposed to be the coldest. In a fit of passion, she helped Aruto reaffirm his belief in humor gear as dream machines that exist for the benefit of mankind. And as the medical humor gear reactivated one by one, the repetition of their activation phrase, take off toward the dream, accompanied by the music, was so incredibly powerful and moving. As viewers, we could feel the humor gear dream reawakening in the depths of Aruto's heart as he resolved to stop Metsubo Jinrai's advance and take responsibility for his decision. Overall, it was really nice to see this conflict and growth in Aruto. Before this, you could say his belief in the goodness of Huma Gear was somewhat naive, but now he has seen the depths of potential darkness of Huma Gear with his own eyes and courageously chosen to continue believing. Next, Yua. Now, Yua's development this episode was super interesting. As I mentioned earlier, normally she's portrayed as a cool character who hides her true intentions under a facade of calm detachment. However, with all the pressure from Isamu's condition and the threat of the hack Giga, all that coolness was torn aside as she stormed into Aruto's office and demanded that he reactivate the medical humor gear. It was great to finally have a glimpse of her true self. From this, we know that Yua truly cares about Isamu and the well-being of people in general. To put it another way, regardless of all the shady stuff she's been doing the past few episodes, I think this episode truly emphasizes that deep down, Yua is a good person. And this may be a possible point of conflict between her and her mysterious superior if he's doing things for his own benefit. Other than this, we also saw Yua develop new faith in Huma Gear as a result of Isamu's life being saved. Previously, the Yua we knew only saw Huma Gear as mere objects or tools. But by the end of episode 9, we see her being slightly swayed towards Aruto's side of believing in the goodness of Huma Gear. Unfortunately, this moment between her and Izu was crushed by Izu's sudden accusation regarding the leaked video, making Yua instantly return to her usual cold mask. Now, this leads us to an important question. Did Yua intentionally leak that video to sabotage hidden intelligence? Personally, I don't think she did, but there are two possibilities. First, maybe she leaked the video before this whole hospital incident, before she became convinced about the potential goodness of humor gear. In this scenario, she might have leaked the video because hidden intelligence is an obstacle to their goal of acquiring or reviving the Ark. She could have done this either of her own will or under her superior's orders. Second, maybe the one who leaked the video wasn't her, but her superior from Zaya Enterprise. As a rival tech company, it wouldn't be surprising for them to want to sabotage Hidden for their own gains. And if this is what happened, Yua wouldn't have been able to defend herself in front of Izu because her relationship with Zaya should be confidential. Either way, I'm looking forward to finding out the truth behind the leaked video and what consequences it will have on Aruto and Hidden Intelligence place in Zero One's world. Moving on to Isamu, there's not much to be said. Just like Yua, this whole arc served to push him more towards Aruto's perspective, and this came at a really critical moment because the past few episodes have really been eroding Isamu's impression of humor gear, from the revelation that they can acquire free will to the revelation that Metsubo Jin Rai are humor gear. 
The final scene he shared with Aruto was really nice, especially because they were looking out towards Daybreak Town in the sunset. You could really feel Isamu sorting out his conflicting thoughts about Humagear, and perhaps the sunset symbolized the end of his murderous hatred. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he'll behave in future episodes. Overall, I love how this arc challenged both Aruto and Isamu's ideas of Humagear, allowing both to mature and reach a new level of common ground. Now just to briefly touch on Matsumo Jin Rai, episode 9 didn't add much, but I liked how Horobi was not the final boss of this arc. He simply showed off his power and capabilities against Vulcan and Zero One, but retreated once breaking Mammoth ruined their plans by destroying the Giga. There was no longer a point in fighting. I think this shows how much of a machine and tactician he is, and really makes us look forward to a true clash between him and our main riders as well, because right now, they seriously don't stand a chance. Moving on to story, there was one small yet important revelation that was made. Izu mentioned that Aruto's grandfather designed Breaking Mammoth not as a weapon, but as a disaster relief system. In other words, the satellite Zeya is a literal arc, which was probably built to carry people in the event of some massive disaster. But what does this mean? Why would Aruto's grandfather plan such a thing? Did he perhaps predict Matsubo Jinrai's uprising, and so prepared a safe haven for humans to retreat to if Humagear succeeded in taking over the Earth? Only time will tell. Finally, on portrayal, I thought the CG for the Breaking Mammoth and Giga fight was pretty decent, and an improvement from the Time Magine fights we saw in GO. The Breaking Impact finisher was really sick, I did not see it coming at all, but it really fits Mammoth's press ability. Other than that, there were quite a few emotional scenes in this episode and the acting was so great, I feel like Yua's actor has improved a lot. In the first few episodes, she seemed a little bit awkward, but now she's become much more natural. She is portraying one of the series' more complex characters though, so it's not too surprising that she needed some time to get used to it. That'll be all for this brief review of episode 9, do leave a like if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you guys think about the episode in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more Kamen Rider and Tokusatsu related content, and I'll see you guys in the next Kamen Rider 01 video.